today we're going to work on the, this mower, which we kind of worked on before, but it is surging. Before we check to see if the flywheel key was broken, and it's not, but it's still surging, so I kind of want to explain how to fix that problem. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to see what it's doing. So let me put you down. Now, this is going to work on the auto choke. This is a manual choke. And whatever type of choke system you have, it's the same. But it does help if you turn it on, which I did. So as you can tell, even though the choke is taking a sweet time turning off, which is normal, um, it just wasn't staying to level RPM, it surges up and down. So the first thing for we're going to take off the carb. I took the liberty of loosening these and took out a 10 millimeter from there. That way you don't have to hear the impact all the time. So that's just the plate we're not going to worry about. I'm going to take the breather off, make it a little easier to work in here. Uh, the fuel is off, I believe. Yes, it is. So when you take this off, it should be fine. We're not going to, okay, the carb, the gasket does come off. That's good. I have to apologize for the noise. It's a, uh, cooler weekend in the summertime so everyone's outside doing yard work just got out of a heat wave no one wanted to be outside for that i was fine with it i mean not fine like it wasn't the greatest thing in the world but i also didn't shut down my life because it, i even worked in the garage one of the benefits of having lived in a desert before I just realized it's how it goes. This fuel line does not want to come off. I think I finally got it. So, it's either going to be junk in the bowl, and it's kind of clogging the main. It could be water. I consider water junk, um, or something that is kind of likely is the the idle jet is a little rough. Let's take that off. Go clean it. One of the best ways of figuring out if there's water is taking either a white or a clear cup drain the fuel in there. It's a little hard to tell if there's garbage in there because you probably are knocking dirt off the top of the carburetor unless you completely cleaned it. It is dirty in there though. I see specks of dirt. Granted that maybe that fell off on there as well. But we are going to take, there's two ways of doing this. One, take all this off like you, you're seeing me do now. It's not bad in there. And take carb cleaner and spray through every single orifice you can. Now, that will work. Um, I'm not personally a fan of it. Little screwdriver, that'd be perfect. Here we go. 
I personally like to take it and put it in an ultrasonic cleaner. But understandably, if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, carb spray is like three or four dollars for a can. The difficult ones will require like a pick kind of push through the center through the emulsion tube kind of push the emulsion tube out because sometimes the jet likes to get caught in there it's unfortunate but it does happen the threads on the very end are not the same as the jet because the bull neck screws in there so they kind of make it a little difficult on that one. Arguably, this is the one of probably one of the most important things to do. I'm gonna try to take that off, not this. I'm gonna try to save that, and we did. We need to take this out, and sometimes it's a black plug. Sometimes it's not. We need to clean that out. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the cleaner. If you're going to be doing carb spray, spray in there. Very thoroughly keep eye protection on every single time. Spray in here. Take out the jet. Spray through there. Take like a wire brush, which I'll show you later, and clean it out. But we're going to, I'm going to put this in there and we'll be right back. Got everything out. Blue dry. So I was talking about the wire brush. Any wire brush, go inside the jet, clean it out. <laughs> Blow through it, should be pretty good. Next, it's the emulsion tube. There's a series of holes. You want to look through them, make sure they're all clean. <laughs> One was a little clogged earlier, and I just put the same bristle through, this, uh, through and it went fine. Put it back in. This little area without the hole goes in first. Put the jet back in. Now these are very, very delicate. You know, if you have any type of resistance, you don't really want to force it. The only thing you're going to do is strip it, and then you have to buy a new carb. And that's kind of the reason why we're even doing this to avoid having to buy a new carb. So that is majority of the time the reason why it's um, doing what it's doing. We have a clean float, put the needle in. There we go. Now, when you spray carb cleaner, do not get the needle wet. In fact, take it out. Don't even let the seat get wet with it. Uh, well, you're probably going to spray it in there, but make sure it's dry. The seat is actually tipped in rubber, and rubber and um, carb cleaner do not mix. It will ruin it. Okay, so now, if you have a carb that has like this, a little rubber plug, you're going to take that out. And there's a jet inside the rubber plug you clean same bristle if not you have one that's down there you have to actually get down there and clean it now you can use compressed air as a as to assist you but you really need to get in there i'm gonna get the smaller bristle a smaller bristle it's gonna Push it on through. There we go. Now I'm going to blow through there again with a compressor. Cover your ears. We should be good. Those like to get plugged a lot. So 
That is probably a good portion of our problem right there. But just in case, we're gonna clean the whole thing. Now, if you want to just only clean that and blow through there, you can and give it a try. I just don't usually find that to be too helpful. Um, you'll probably fix a lot of it, but you might still see a little bit. And you already took it off, why not just clean it? I'm gonna put it back on and we'll give it a pull. Carb is on, fuel is on. Double check it's not leaking, it's dry. Let's give it a pull, see if it does the same thing. Now the choke is going to make it kind of chug in the beginning. It does need time to turn off, but once it stops, that's when we really want to listen. I was looking for that gasket. I even had to put a new one on there, sitting right there. This one. Oh well. I'll put this one in my stash where I got the other one. But yeah, it seems to be working pretty good now. Um, when you have this problem, uh, it's probably from, like I said, either water or junk in the t uh, carb, primarily the bowl, and or uh, the idle circuit being a little plugged. It's such a small jet that a, the smallest of items can cause problems in there. A speck of dust can cause a problem. Now, it doesn't seem like that would be too much of a problem because you say idle, but it doesn't just idle. It uses only that when idling but when it's at full, or at least in this case, the desired RPM range, it will supply a little bit of fuel. And the main is jetted to be using both the main and the idle circuit at the same time. So if you don't have an idle, your main's not gonna be providing enough, then you're gonna have this problem. Or if your main is also just plugged, and your idle's not, then it's still the exact same thing except just reversed. So the really important thing is to clean it, carb spray. I would highly recommend an air compressor and blow through every single area you can. If you have an ultrasonic cleaner, even better, blow through there every area you can. In addition to that, if you don't have an air compressor, it'd be wise to just go out and get a can of compressed air and blow through there. It, you really need to put some air through there to get it cleaned out and make sure there's nothing uh, you know, in there and it's gonna cause a future problem. The fuel had no water in it. I took a little fuel from the tank and it was normal. I'm not too concerned over it. It was running, so. But this is how you fix a um, surging Honda. If you did have water in there, I'll just explain that real quick. If you had any water in the bowl, you drain the tank, dry it out very thoroughly with your compressor, towel, whatever. If you do use a towel, make sure it's not very hairy. Shop towels will have a little hair on them. Try to get something that's not very hairy or at least minimally and then blow it out. And other than that, uh, put new fuel in there blow through all the carburetor jets like we drew, did today. Water's a little bit more intensive because we don't want any water in there whatsoever. Okay, this helped. Put a comment below. Definitely subscribe and I'll catch me in the next video. Have a good night.